Hello and welcome to another installment in the HPRC video tutorial series. In this video, you'll learn what a batch system or scheduler is, as well as how to submit a job to the LSF batch system. This video is recommended to be watched after the previous videos in our Getting Started series. It's important to keep in mind that the clusters are a shared resource between many users. When performing small tests or managing files, it's convenient for users to simply run their commands on a login node. But for work requiring more than eight cores, the compute nodes must be used to prevent users from impeding each other. To run your job on the compute nodes, you will create a job script, which basically consists of a list of shell commands to run. Aside from that, you will also specify job parameters. After that, you will submit the job to the job scheduler, and the job scheduler will find the available resources to run your job. The Ada Clusters batch system, LSF, has a specific syntax for its job files. The easiest way to start making a job file is to modify the pre-made templates on the HPRC wiki page, which is linked in the description below. From the main wiki page, we can click Ada on the left-hand navigation bar under User Guides, then click the Job File Examples link under Batch Processing. So as you can see, this section provides different kinds of templates for different kinds of jobs. First and simplest is the serial job, which means it runs on one core and one node. There are also job file templates for multi-core single node and multi-core multi-node jobs. Additional templates are available for jobs that require a specific queue on the cluster, such as the case when jobs must be run on a GPU or V100 node. Note that running a job with multiple cores or nodes does not automatically make it parallel. You will need additional software for this, and it's not guaranteed to run faster in parallel. The job file begins with necessary specifications for LSF jobs. These include the job name, the bash environment, the wall time, or max runtime for the job, the total number of cores the job will need, the number of cores per node the job will need, which is used to calculate how many nodes the job will run on, the R usage flag is to indicate the maximum amount of memory LSF should reserve. The dash M flag is actually how much memory will be reserved by the system, which will actually kill the job if it goes over. These two should always match. And finally, the output file. The output file stores all console output created by the job, including error logs, which are very important for debugging. So for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this whole template. Let me add that it's easiest to create job files on the cluster itself rather than on your personal machine. That way they're ready to be given to LSF. Otherwise, your job file will need to be transferred to the cluster from the machine you're editing on. In addition to being more tedious, this can also lead to errors with job execution. For example, if the job file was written on a Windows machine, it will have invisible carriage return line feed characters, or CRLF characters, which are not compatible with Unix-based systems. If needed, Information on file uploading can be found in our earlier videos in the Getting Started series. HPRC also provides a solution to this CRLF problem with the DOS to Unix command. This command automatically will remove the CRLF characters in the file. More information on this can be found by searching DOS to Unix on the wiki page. I'll also provide a link to that page in the description. So to create a new job file, I can type in nano, which is the name of my text editor of choice, and then the name of my job which I'll call mynewjob.sh. So now that I'm in the text editor, I can paste in the template from the wiki page. So let's say in my hypothetical job, I'll need eight gigs of memory. So I'll set the R usage flag to 8,000, as well as the dash M flag to 8,000. So let's say I'll be processing data sets in Python, and I think the whole job will take about two hours. It's better, better to be generous with the wall time estimate so I'll go ahead and set it to three hours just in case my job goes over, it won't crash. Now for the optional job specifications, I can delete the billing account parameter because I've already got my default account set through the my project command. Next, I can delete the example email address and add my own. That way I get notifications upon the job start and finish. So now we're ready to input commands that the job actually needs to run. As I said, I'll be processing datasets in Python in this hypothetical job, but before I can do any sort of processing with Python, I've got to load the Python module first. I'll be using this version, but you can use any version that you like. If you're not familiar with our module system already, we have a video on it earlier in our Getting Started series, as well as a page for it on our wiki. So now that I've loaded the Python module, my Python script now has a proper environment to run on. So I'll give Python my script here. 
For monitoring purposes, I want this job to run for a bit, so in lieu of having anything better to run, I'll just add a simple delay in that script. Now that my job file is complete, I can save it, Control O, Enter, and then Control X. And now my job is ready to be given to the scheduler. So to give the job file to the scheduler, I type B sub, left caret, the name of my job. Note that the argument for the B sub command is a file path. I can just write the name of the job because I'm currently in the same directory that the job is in. Okay, so I'll go ahead and submit that. So now that my job has been submitted, I can check the status of it using the following command. bjobs-u my net ID. Running the bjobs command again, I can see that my job is completed. So now I can check the console output of it in my output file. To do that, I can use the cat command to print out my output file. And I put a print statement before and after my delay, and I can see that there's no error log. So my job ran as expected, and my work here is done. Thank you so much for watching this instructional video. Be sure to check out our other videos and subscribe to our channel to get updates about new videos. You can also follow us on Twitter at tamu underscore hprc, or click the link to our account on the hprc main page, which is also linked in the description.